again, everyone. This is Oklahoma Sports Scene. I'm Gil Cloud taking Chris Lincoln, who's off again with another knee replacement. Hopefully he's rehabbing and he'll be there and, and be back with us uh, in June when we tape again. Uh, but on my left over here, I have the Hall of Fame athletic director and basketball coach, J.B. Haney. And on my right, who is now taking my place, John Klein, a world-renowned feature writer for the Tulsa Every world. two years, I'm coming back to haunt you guys. <laughs> Once every two years, the rest of your lives, I'm showing up here just to haunt you. Well, we're excited about Bricktown Brewery, our title sponsor for this show, and uh, some of the people we've got coming. Uh, uh, we have the gymnastics coaches from the uh, University of Oklahoma. Uh, the men won the national championship. The women came in by one hundredth of a point second place. If the little girl from UCLA doesn't do the uh, expert 10 uh, and come off and uh, they win, but they didn't again. Uh, Taki Abdul Simmons is the men's coach. And then we have uh, JK Candler, who is the women's coach. And then a good friend of ours, JV, is going to tell us about sports gaming. Well, when we talk about uh, George Tiger, the former chief of the Creek Nation, and he knows what is happening when it comes to gaming. Looking forward to it. I think so. With the Supreme Court ruling seven to two to allow the states to make that yes. decision, John, what do you think about that? I don't think there's any question we're going to get it. And I read a story recently. The Dallas Morning News has a story saying that they didn't think it could pass in Texas, which would be a boom for Oklahoma. Because if Texas passed it, and then it kind of opens the door to maybe casinos, that would really be a big hit for us. But hey, if they're not going to pass it, I think we'll pass it pretty quick. Because from what I've been hearing, we were already kind of toying with that idea. It, they just passed as part of the education bill, the uh, craps and uh, roulette. Right. Uh, it's going to be full service Las Vegas out here at 81st and uh, Riverside. It's and James, and we'll never get JV out of there. <laughs> You'll never get him back here to tape another show. He'll be loving down there. He, 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 exactly. I mean, he, he won't be here on, on the 12th in, in Frankfurt. Well, it's uh, a habit. It's a good habit. Good habit. <laughs> Tell us about the, the Tulsa Public Schools this year, JV, and state championship. Well, I'll tell you, when you take a look at five state championships that was won by the Tulsa Public Schools in, in my years here, from 1960, I cannot remember ever winning five state titles. And every one of them, they deserve to be won. And we talk about the football at Booker T. Washington. Uh, we talk about the, uh, the basketball at Memorial, the Booker T. Washington girls. What's, what's the others? The Booker missing? T. Uh, uh, men's swim team. Uh, the swim team. And then uh, the we, tennis team. Didn't we get a tennis team? Not, not a, no, no tennis. No tennis. But, uh, and then we had three runner-ups. Uh, throughout the year, so you know it was a, it was a good good year for us, and we're excited about that. And uh, and then of course we're going to talk about sports betting with uh, Chief Tiger, and uh, then you know the Preakness, what a race the Preakness <laughs> Justify. Well, I want to tell you something that if you didn't bet on Justify, you just weren't looking at the time when, after he wins the Kentucky Derby. You got to bet on him to win the Preakness. And now this next week, which is it that he plays? You got to bet on him there too. At the Belmont. And I Belmont. don't know if uh, I heard today something about an injury. You know, this <laughs> this is going to be one of those deals where you're going to bet $100 to win one. <laughs> and that's what's going to end up. And everyone's going to bet on him. So I, I don't know. I mean, you know, I kept looking for long shots, but you're right. I. I just don't know. I mean, this horse looks really strong. So, and and I'm sure you know people are going to continue to bet it. I mean, it's going to the odds on it are going to be awful. But I mean, if it runs to form, well, he went he, off, he, he went off one to five. Yeah, you right. Know, that's in, what I'm saying. Break, I mean, he's going to pay two eighty, two sixty, and two eighty. <laughs> <laughs> he made eighty cents on a two dollar bet. Yeah, but you know the thing that I noticed that his trainer is good. The the preparation that horse has. When he goes into the chute to go, he is ready to go. And that's why he's not very muddy on a muddy track because they're not throwing mud at him. He's leading. Well, here's something to talk about, too. Speaking about his trainer, 
Uh, I heard Pat Jones uh, speaking today about that and wanted to know if Bob Baffert uh, had a wig on. <laughs> Said he had too much hair for as old as he oh. is. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we had a great week uh, at uh, Remington Park this week, and uh, I think Dale Day is here to uh, update what happened. The biggest and richest night of the Remington Park season takes place on June 2nd. The final night of the season, known as the Mega Card Night of Stakes Racing, is taking shape with the fields for the $1 million Heritage Place Futurity and the $373,000 Heritage Place Derby now set. 22 trials were conducted over two nights of racing to put the Heritage Place Futurity field together. The top qualifier on night number one roared down the rail to a convincing victory. They're off. Good start. BB the race is on, coming on just like my mom at the rail rolling, Aqua Flash now getting into it. It is Symbol of Faith battling for the front with Aqua Flash, who now finds more gears than anybody else has, and Aqua Flash has opened up by two or more Aqua Flash easily in this one. On the second night of trials, May 12th, VF Jedi Returns used his experience from a second place run in April's Remington Park Juvenile Stakes to hold off a closing sunny side to have the best time on night number two. The field for the $1 million Heritage Place Futurity is set for the richest race in Oklahoma and the first million dollar Futurity of 2018. Trainer Amanda Tongay saddled the top two qualifiers for the Heritage Place Derby on Sunday, May 13th in Fast Prize Rumor and PYC Fun and Fancy. Fast Prize Rumor was the top qualifier, easily winning his trial by one and a quarter lengths. Fast Prize Rumor rolling late to pull away. Remington Park Derby winner DFAJ Greenleaves qualified for the Heritage Place Derby and will attempt his second Derby triumph of the season. It's all DFAJ Greenleaves and Jose Alvarez clear by over three lengths. The other top races on the season finale night of June 2nd include the Remington Park Championship, the Speed Horse Graham Futurity for Paints and Appaloosas, the Juno's Request Stakes, and more. Please note the special first race times on these key race dates as the season winds down. Memorial Day, Monday, May 28th, first race 3 p.m. And on the final night of the season, Saturday, June 2nd, racing action begins at 5 p.m. Still plenty of great racing left in the season here at Remington Park, but it's quickly winding down with that big final night fast approaching on June 2nd. At Remington Park in Oklahoma City, I'm Dale Day, now back to Sports Scene. Thank you, Dale. That's great to hear what's going on at Remington Park. And uh, stay tuned now with us because we've got the head gymnastics coach from the University of Oklahoma to tell us about their national championship. Now we got to talk about Bricktown and that great comfort food, JB. And, you know, we were over there uh, about a month ago and met with Cheryl Albright, who is their uh, marketing director. And uh, now we didn't have every one of these things. But when you look at what they have <laughs> on their menu, uh, Chicken fried turkey sandwich. Delicious. Absolutely. And roasted pork loin, barbecue pork mac and cheese, and their mac and cheese is outstanding. Uh, apple grilled bacon with tomato soup and the Bricktown chopped salad. Can't beat it. barbecue, right? Not some frozen meat cooked who knows where, who knows when, and then trucked in. No, it's got to be the finest cuts. It's got to be a lot of choices, like nine different meats. It's got to be fast for dine-in, carry-out, or catering. It's got to be smoked fresh right there that day over aged pecan wood. It's got to be the place where all the barbecue wannabes take a back seat, because they can't compete. It's got to be real barbecue, right? It's got to be Billy Sims. Billy Sims Barbecue. Eat like a champion today. Welcome back to Oklahoma Sports Scene. We're excited today to have the assistant coach from the University of Oklahoma, Taki Abdul Simmons, and he's going to tell us a little bit about their program. But I tell you, Taki, it's it's unbelievable. And as you said a few minutes ago, 93% uh, uh, during uh, the coach's time there, 100% yeah. during your three <laughs> times, there, three years there. Correct. But uh, eight national titles, 
15 Big 12 titles. Uh, my goodness, uh, how many All Americans? Just, uh, yeah. just it's just been an un- <laughs> incredible uh, run for uh, the Sooners. Yeah. Tell us how that happens. Uh, you know, Mark Williams does an amazing job recruiting and then setting up a, a great uh, lesson plan and plan for the for the guys at OU. You know, he he's a, a workaholic. I, I'd say. His greatest attribute as a coach is the plan he puts in place and the athletes and coaches he puts around him. And then, you know, he makes sure the guys work out hard. I feel like our team is always one of the hardest working teams, if not the hardest working team year in, year out. And that's what allows the guys to compete at their best when it matters the most and allowed us to have this type of success so far. Coach, where do you get most of your kids? Now, we don't have gymnastics competitively uh, that I'm aware of in the state of Oklahoma not within the school system, but where do you really go to get these gymnasts? Well, we get guys from all across the country. We get quite a few guys from Texas. You know, I think we have on last year's team, we had seven from the Houston area. Um, And then we actually had an an Oklahoma athlete this past year, which we haven't had one in probably about, you know, six, seven years or so. You know, some guys on the West Coast, California, uh, Pennsylvania, New Jersey. So, you know, we recruit all over, but, you know, the majority of our athletes do come from uh, the Texas area. Is that right? So Texas has Texas. big gymnastics. Yep, Texas is big on gymnastics. Uh, we're really fortunate enough to uh, one of the best clubs in the country uh, down in Houston, Cypress Academy. Uh, the head coach there is an alumni of OU, and then he's been producing amazing athletes. So we've been really fortunate to be able to really grab some of their better guys throughout the years to allow us to have the success. What are some of the other states that, that produce gymnastics? Some of the other states, uh, California is a great gymnastics area. Uh, the, you know, Michigan does a good job in gymnastics. And then Florida has been picking up uh, lately. And then also the Northeast, you know, uh, Massachusetts, Connecticut, that, that area has been doing better in the past years. So, you know, the, the rest of the country, the junior athletes are really amazing now. So, you know, we can find great athletes from all across the country. It's not just, you know, those places. You know, in college tennis and college golf, these guys get people from Sweden and South Africa, yeah. and they go all over the world. Is it? Is it? Are do you pretty much stick to the U.S. as, as far as gymnasts go? Or yeah, we generally stick to the U.S. We actually have a guy from Canada on mm-hmm. the team that competed for us this past season. But you know, we feel like we have enough great talent here in the country, so we don't feel the need to necessarily recruit from uh, other countries. What? Uh, tell us about your background. How did you get to OU and <laughs> there three years and be 100 percent national uh, champion? Well, I was an athlete at OU. Uh, you know, I had I lived in I grew up in Philadelphia, then moved to Texas to train in Houston at the National Training Center. Then I was recruited uh, by Mark Williams. My brother actually also attended OU, so he got there two years before I did, and that kind of made the choice really easy for me. Um, after I graduated, I started to uh, I was a performer down at Disney World. So I was in the Lion Very King cool. show, did that for a few years, you know, went to a Cirque du Soleil, did the Cirque show. Unfortunately, I, I uh, broke my neck in the show. Yeah. So, and then during my recovery, Mark gave me a call and uh, essentially offered me the assistant coaching job and been doing it ever since the last three years. And it's been a great run so far. What events were you in? Uh, I was an all-around athlete. Um, in 2007, I was the national champion in the all-around. So, uh, and during during my years here, we were I was three for four national championships. So, my time at OU has been uh, really successful, and I credit a lot of that to you know Mark Williams and his his job as a as a coach of mine and now as a mentor. What do you think about the the future of gymnastics at the University of Oklahoma? Oh, the, the future's great. You know, we have a great uh, support system. Joe Casiglione, Lindy Roberts uh, does an, do an amazing job giving us all the tools that we need to uh, be successful. We have a great training environment, great, uh, uh, great support staff. Our trainers do an amazing job. So I just I don't think we're going to slow down anytime soon. We may not win every year. That's always the goal. The goal is to be competitive and put ourselves in a situation to win. But uh, you know, I think we'll be up there for as long as I can remember. Or, you know, in recruiting a gymnast, do they come from public schools? Do they go from private schools? Uh, I've read so many different stories about this. They're coming from public and private schools. But the thing is, in gymnastics, there aren't many high school gymnastics programs. So these are coming from club programs. So these guys are paying to do gymnastics at the lower and the junior level. You know, in the high school 
Texas is pretty big in high school gymnastics, but there are really few states that actually still offer high school gymnastics anymore. So, so most of the guys, if not all of our athletes are coming from club gyms. So it's a little bit like, I know in college soccer, most of their athletes, they recruit them out of the club yeah. sports, not a high school. So yeah. they, they usually are committed long before their senior year of high school. And I assume that's similar yep, in gymnastics. Yep, exact same way, exact same way. Guys are coming from club. I came from a club gym and I would say about 95% of the guys, you know, sometimes we have walk-ons that come from a high school system and then they can work their way onto the team, but generally they're all coming from club and, gyms. And is, are the clubs in Houston, that you mentioned Cypress, is yeah. that out in the Cypress area? Yeah, that's in, in the Northwest, Cypress, yeah, uh, yeah, right outside Northwest of Houston. Northwest part of Houston, yeah. yeah exactly. Great football there too. Uh, yep, they, they yep. could, you could recruit some gymnasts and some football players while you're there. <laughs> <laughs> if I knew that much. Those clubs, how, how large are they? How many how many students do they have going to these clubs? Oh, these clubs, it, it depends. You know, we, they have the rec track where kids just go there to just to take part in gymnastics and then team programs. And anywhere, those these clubs can have about 1,500 kids in their, in their programs. But, you know, I would say generally the boy size uh, team clubs are mainly anywhere from – 15 to 55, 60 athletes in that range of competitive gymnasts. And they travel all over the country. And they travel all over the country to compete against other club gyms. So yeah. where, where do they get their funding for those? For the club? Yeah. Uh, well, they, every every year they, they have to pay tuition, so they have to pay month by month. So that's where they, uh, that's how they get there. So they're not into it like the AAU basketball to get all the. Uh, no, no, we, there's not much. Apparently, no, no shoe no, contracts for the no, gymnasts. No, no, if, if only, if only, yeah, you know. So <laughs> if someone wants to put some shoes on some gymnasts, <laughs> I, I, I know gymnasts will wear them for sure. I bet, for sure. yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, you, you wouldn't be opposed to having some logos on. No, no, yeah. you, hey, exactly. come on, you know, gym, you know, gymnastics is not the most well known sport when, when it comes to the media attention that it gets uh but you know these we're amazing athletes they're amazing athletes and if if uh, people want to partake in sponsoring more gymnasts then I, I would say go for it because there's something there in gymnasts and they're great athletes and you know i i feel like most of the time they're really great athletes uh on the, not students as well the, the olympics are such a huge thing for gymnasts yeah. and i'm wondering does a, does a program like at OU, do you have to kind of gear your program to say, okay, we have an Olympic year coming up in such and such year. Do you have to kind of gear it because you have, I'm going to guess almost yeah. all your athletes have aspirations of being in the Olympics. Yeah, most of our athletes do have aspirations of at least making the effort to go to the Olympics. And, you know, generally about two years out, we'll start to just think about necessarily like, well, we need to possibly build your routine start values up and make sure you have the difficulty to be at least considered for Olympic spot. But, you know, the college season always takes precedent. You know, we're, everyone comes out, you know, that they're come here to be a part of a great team. Your individual success will happen because if you're really trying your best for the team, you'll be better as an individual. So therefore, when the Olympics is closer, then the guys start revving up and the coaches start to be a little bit more tailored and doing things that are a little more tailored to them being successful in that avenue. Well, Taki, congratulations on a national championship. Oh, thank you thank very you much. Thank you for yeah. being on Sports great, Scene today. Thank you for and having us. And we want you to go to Bricktown on us. Okay, this sounds you good. You know where that is, down by the <laughs> oh, ballpark. of course, of course. I know where Bricktown is. <laughs> and Thank we'll be right much. back after these messages. There is no limit to what we will do to help the next generation. As Oklahoma's only affiliate of St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, we are able to deliver state-of-the-art treatment and the most innovative clinical trials to kids with cancer and blood disorders. This is truly world-class care, right here at home. The St. Jude Affiliate Clinic at the Children's Hospital at St. Francis. Healthcare for life. 30 years ago, a race began along a quarter mile of dirt and dreams in Oklahoma City. Today, with the biggest prize money and the best horses, that glittering quarter mile is home to the best quarter horse racing on earth. And the final weekend is June 2nd, when it all reaches a fever pitch with the million dollar Heritage Place Futurity. Plus your chance to win big. World's best, OKC Zone, Remington Park. Already. I got it. No! Your room is gonna be so cute. OU is a pace setter in higher education. 
and leads the nation in the number of National Merit Scholars enrolled. Your journey continues here at the University of Oklahoma. At Bricktown Brewery, we're known for our famous original craft beers like Single String Stout and Bluesberry Ale. Did you know we also brew our own root beer at our Oklahoma City brew house? It's called Attaboy Root Beer, and you'll love it no matter what your age. Just ask for a Bricktown Kids menu with all the favorites for our guests 12 and under. Bricktown Brewery opens every day at 11 a.m. Welcome back to Oklahoma Sports Scene, and we're excited to have the head women's coach in gymnastics from the University of Oklahoma, K.J. Kindler. KJ, welcome to Sports Scene. Thank you so much for having me. We are excited about your program, and I know you, you had a difficult national championship, and we'll talk about that in a moment, but my goodness, uh, 10 Big 12 championships, uh, 115 uh, All-Americans, uh, my goodness, uh, five undefeated seasons. Uh, you've really had a really good run. Thank you so much. It's been amazing. Uh, we've Our program's finished in the top three in the last seven years, which is pretty phenomenal. Um, but we couldn't do it without a lot of support from our athletic department. And, and the women are just hard workers. They just plug away every single day. Really blessed. You know, the thing that comes to my mind, were you a gymnast in uh, high school and college? I was. I was. And uh, I was a taller gymnast. You probably noticed that when I walked in. Mm -hmm. um, so I was better at bar, uh, beam and bars. But vault's not so good. Floor, okay. Debbie's been pretty good at bars. Is he? Yeah. <laughs> I would love to see that. Well, I mean, there's one right down at the corner. Well. All right. <laughs> no, tell us about your background. Yeah. Where'd you grow up and uh, how did you become a gymnast? Yeah, um, I grew up in Minnesota, a little town called Lake Elmo. And it's just a suburb of St. Paul. And I actually, um, I have six, uh, there's six siblings in oh my, my family. Goodness. Yep. And I'm the eldest, so I was always in charge, but I was also very independent because uh, we had a lot of little ones running around. So my mom put me in gymnastics when I was four, and I started then in the basement of a house, you know, and uh, it just hap so happens this woman um, who ran this program in the basement of her house was the head coach of Hamlin University which is a Division three school in St. Paul. And what ended up happening was I kind of graduated out of the basement and moved on to uh, practice at Hamlin, just in the club program there. Learned to love, uh, love college athletics just from being in that atmosphere. And uh, went on to go to Iowa State as a gymnast there. I was a walk-on. So I just you know went for free because I loved it and I earned a scholarship down the road. And, um, and yeah, the rest is history. I stayed on there, became an assistant coach, a head coach there, and then uh, Joe Castiglione came and, and got me. So now I've been at Oklahoma 12 years already. And aren't we lucky you're there? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, John? Well, I think she escaped the snow of Ames from my uh, experiences in Ames late in, uh, late in February and uh, March oh, yes. during basketball season. Hey, you, you've had an amazing run. It, it really is amazing how Oklahoma has become so good at gymnastics. And JB had brought it up earlier. And I, I'm amazed because Oklahoma is not a big gymnastic state. It is for the university, mm -hmm. but high schools, I, I guess... Do you have many Oklahoma kids? I mean, are the I, I would I would guess occasionally mm -hmm. get someone like Shannon that comes along who's a mm -hmm. multi gold medal winner. But right. uh, Oklahoma is it a growing sport here? Not growing sport? How's it? How is it in the state? I think it's hard to gauge because it isn't a high school sport, so right. you don't see it in the high schools. It's strictly a club sport. Um, and there are great clubs in the state of Oklahoma and actually in this entire region of the country. And, and that's why we're able to be so great. You know, we always have Oklahoma athletes on our team, no doubt about it. Um, scholarship walk-on doesn't matter. We have great clubs developing athletes here in Tulsa, um, Oklahoma City, in Norman. And so we're seeing, yeah, lots of great athletes coming out of here. I think you just don't hear about it as much because it's not at the high school level. And you, Houston's really good, right? There's a yes. lot of Houston, clubs Dallas, and... um, Austin. Yes. All of those areas in Texas, huge. Yeah. 
So you, you've got enough athletes around here that, yes. yeah, you can kind of concentrate around here and then go out and get the occasional, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. great one in California or yes. Philadelphia, wherever they may come from. Yes. I would say we focus on Highway 35 from Minnesota all go. the way down to Texas. There you go. So we have Minnesotans, Chicago, Chicago Lake Elmo uh, Michigan. All the way to That's the... right. I have, well, I have two Minnesotans on our really? team. I have a lot of connections there. So, yeah, it's, yeah. it's easy to get some great athletes from there. Excellent. Maggie Nichols, the mm -hmm. world champion um, team member. She came from the Minneapolis area. So Excellent. yeah. And her teammate will be joining us next year. So lots of good things. Yeah. You know, uh, in uh, division one intercollegiate athletics, the, uh, arms race is always there. Mm -hmm. How are your facilities rack up with everybody else in the country? Um, we have a great facility. Uh, we're definitely due for some improvements and those are coming our way. I'm, I've been meeting with architects for an entire year, so looking forward to some upgrades to our facility, hopefully in the next two years. Great. How many scholarships do you have? We have 12. 12 full rides, so we don't divide those amongst anyone. Oh, you don't? No, no equivalencies? Huh? No. Mm -mm. Be. Just head count. Yeah. That's good. How How's about it? your attendance? Yes. How, you know, you have a good facility. I've, mm -hmm. uh, I've seen the pictures of it. <laughs> but how about the attendance for your home events? That's definitely something we're working on and something that's been a focus of ours since I got here. Um, we had over between 500 and 600 when I first arrived, and now our average is over 4,000 per competition. Oh, yeah, but we're, we're wanting to get more in the six to 8,000 range. Um, you see teams all over the country selling out their arena for women's gymnastics. Utah, over 15,000 leading the nation. Every meet sold out 100%. You've got Alabama, Georgia, Florida, all who are bringing in over 10,000 people per competition. So those are definitely goals for us. That's definitely something we're shooting for. What does the future look like for your program? Um, I, I always think the future looks bright. Uh, we have four awesome athletes coming in next year. We lost four great athletes. You know, you're you're always losing these wonderful, wonderful women, and then hopefully you got new ones coming in to just slide into their spot. Um, we have some amazing recruits that I can't discuss. We um, we actually recruit really far in advance. I'm uh, working on the 2022 class right, right now. Um, which are eighth graders right now. Yeah. So kind of yeah. like Patty Gasso and softball, we work really early and uh, we have some great people lined up um, and you should keep watching for sure. Do you have to make adjustments on your team and how you approach seasons because mm -hmm. of the Olympic years? Mm -hmm. I mean, do you have to mm -hmm. sometimes balance you know, the interest of your athletes mm -hmm. in participating in the Olympics mm -hmm. and the college program at the same time? Is that a mm -hmm factor for you at all Olympic it is. years? It is. And that's actually a great question. You know, the, the men's program definitely has Olympic, Olympic contenders on it. For women, a lot of times their time is right before they come to college. However, mm -hmm. the age is getting older and older. And so what we've seen is Brenna Dowell, who will be a senior for us next year. She came to Oklahoma her freshman year, deferred and left her sophomore year to pursue that Olympic dream and then came back following that um, that year. So we'll see people come, leave, come back, or maybe come a year later than they mm -hmm. would have. Um, we're seeing that a lot. It's called deferring and they do it. And um, we have to put the puzzle together sure. when that happens because it kind of becomes a mess. You know, I can't give <laughs> that scholarship to somebody else. We have to right. find somebody to cover it for a year because you don't want to lose that athlete either. You can't just go find another full ride. And, and kind of work with them and make sure their, yes. their routines yes. have a high enough difficulty yes. and... Yes, definitely, and, and make sure you're working with the club coach on that level as well. Hey, Jay, we're certainly glad you're here, and uh, because you're here, we want you to go to Bricktown on us. Oh, my gosh, I would love to. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and we wish you good luck this next Thank year. Thank you. And if you come need back some more sometime. athlete, <laughs> Jay needs your man. All right, all right. And uh, let me tell you, we would love for you all to come down to a meet, and I just want to say, UCLA is coming to Norman. All right. And it's a rematch because we lost to them in the national Absolutely. championship yeah. by 0.03, yeah. and we need everybody in the stands. And you, I, want, I would love you three to be there. <laughs> we'll do I'll that. put I'll you be on there. the floor. I'll put you on the floor. We'll, we'll do that. All, All right. right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Now we have uh, JV Haney. You want to tell us about the, uh, the newspaper? The GTR. Always a pleasure to talk about the GTR because what Forrest Cameron and his wife Sharon have done, as far as the newspaper is concerned, it's just remarkable. Six of these are published in the Metro Tulsa area. 
So if you want to read about sports, if you want to read about religion, if you want to read about society things that are occurring, anything that you might want, you can find in the GTR. And more importantly, they always run a big page of what is happening and what is coming to Tulsa. If you haven't had an opportunity to read a GTR, let me encourage you to pick one up as soon as possible. What we see isn't always what we get. A smile can hide a hundred struggles. Depression, anxiety, addiction, and eating disorders affect more people than you realize. People you know. At Laureate Psychiatric Clinic and Hospital, we offer a wide range of inpatient and outpatient services to help anyone with any degree or form of mental illness. Laureate in St. Francis. Healthcare for life. At Bricktown Brewery, we're known for our famous original craft beers like Single String Stout and Bluesberry Ale. Did you know we also brew our own root beer at our Oklahoma City brew house? It's called Attaboy Root Beer, and you'll love it no matter what your age. Just ask for a Bricktown Kids menu with all the favorites for our guests 12 and under. Bricktown Brewery opens every day at 11 a.m. I bring Tulsa's voice to Oklahoma City and Washington. I build relationships with elected officials and community stakeholders to develop policies that grow the Tulsa region. A lot of my time at Rider State University, the personal relationships I developed with professors really helped develop a skill set that would help me serve the Tulsa region that I care about. It all started for me at Rider State University. Welcome back to Oklahoma Sports Scene. We have a special guest today, the Assistant Director of Athletics for the Tulsa Public Schools, Mick Wilson. And Mick, we got a big event coming. Yes, we do. We have a big golf tournament that uh, will be starting on Friday, June 1st. And uh, JV and I have talked about it many times. Of course, JV he likes to come and hang around. <laughs> it's, uh, it's our big athletic department fundraiser, and uh, we expect a big crowd and a full course, and it'll be, uh, be a great day of golf and also a great day of uh, stories. You know, the golf tournaments are kind of like fishing. Uh, those stories, there's lots of lots of legitimate stories, and there's a lot of lies as well. So, uh, and you know that is the most fun about that golf tournament is the fact that every year you think I can't have this much fun next year, but the stories that come in, the people you see, and uh, of course my memory is not real good. They can tell the same story and it's still funny, but they, they just really. Uh, it's just a great day of golf. John, do you believe that he just admitted on TV that he likes to tell uh, lies? I, I've heard stories from both of these guys <laughs> 73 times each. And I still pretend like I'm laughing, but uh, well, I bet they John, are still funny. John, you can get some stories, I think, if you, if you came. Well, maybe I should come out there and tell a few stories. So. Some of them might even be true. Absolutely. <laughs> so how, how does somebody get in? Maybe? Well, really what we need to do is uh, we can go online and uh, go to La Fortune to the uh, La Fortune Park Golf Course and uh, go online to register. Or you can call uh, our athletic department, call it myself or Lisa Norman, and we'll get you uh, registered. We've had uh, registrations continue to fill up, and we really need to get those in probably in the next few days. But uh, we're sitting now at about 32 teams as, as wow. we go on air today. So. We don't have many spots left, or we'll have to start pulling uh, pulling people out like Mr. Haney and tell them that they have to <laughs> stay up at the at the at the golf house with me. So uh, can't go out and play JV. Enough cart riding. He's come in, come in and do some legitimate work, will you? We won't turn down anybody that wants to come and play. I can assure you that. Absolutely and you not. Can, you can reach uh, Lisa Norman at 918-746-6453. Uh, and or go online, as Mick said, and sign up. The, the application is online, and uh, it'll be a great day, uh, as JB has said. When We have a lot of graduates that come back uh, and, and play in the tournament, and the stories do get embellished a little bit. We have lunch uh, for them uh, between 11 and 12 with a 1 o'clock uh, uh, shotgun start, and uh, it should be a, a great day. La Fortune has done a great job for us. They have. Pat and his crew out there at La Fortune have been great to us. And uh, it's just another great year. And, and you guys are right. Probably some of the best camaraderie we have is during the golf tournament. I mean, you see guys that have coached in the district and gone on and then come back. John Phillips, Steve Cooper, uh, those guys all come. And then a lot of our sports, sporting good salesmen throughout the district that people know statewide come back and play and a lot of alumni. So it's just a great day. Tony Peters comes back from, uh, you know, when he was at Hale High School and uh, 
of course, his great run in the NFL and, and a great All-American at OU. So we have a lot of guys that come back and play and support us. And really, uh, every dollar that we, we make directly benefits kids. It helps really fund a lot of our a lot of our smaller programs and especially our junior high sports. So it's a great way to give back and a great way to really help the kids of the district uh, get a lot of the things that we need to, in order to be successful. And we appreciate our, our corporate partners, BSN and Coca-Cola. Uh, are always with us. And who are some of the other ones? Well, this year I saw a check come in from Macintosh. I saw checks come in from, uh, um, we've had Dick's Sporting Goods helps us as well, uh, just all over. Uh, a lot of our vendors in Tulsa Public Schools, such as uh, Linux Heating and Air. So we get all those people that really like to come back and a lot of people that uh, bid for different things throughout the bond process will also come and play. So uh, we get a lot of great support from a lot of those companies. And we'll have the silent auction. We do. We have a silent auction that will have items that uh, have been donated by uh, a lot of uh, people throughout the area. A lot of our casinos and a lot of our gaming industry people uh, donate hotel rooms and things like that 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 help. We also get support from the BOK Center. Jeff Nickler and the, and the staff there uh, d donate concert tickets and things to go up for the silent auction. So there's a lot of neat prizes. Bikes, uh, we talked about uh, possibly getting some flat screen TVs and some things like that. Yeti coolers and things that we uh, we're currently working on, but we're looking for those kind of things as well to to be able to award. We really like the golf tournament to be such a good event that we like the people to be able to go home with a with a good prize. We also provide each golfer a nice uh, zip up pull pullover this year that uh, is uh, has our logo on it. So there'll be some nice prizes, some nice gifts to go home with, and a Nike brand as always. As uh, as always, because we're a Nike school. <laughs> yes, we are. So if you want to if you want to get in the tournament, give Mick a call or Lisa 918-746-6453 uh, and be a part of something that's really great to help kids in the Tulsa Public Schools. We we're excited about this year uh, with uh, what we've done and, and what our coaches have done. I think it's it'll be an outstanding year. We'll be right back after these messages. Already. OU is a pace setter in higher education and leads the nation in the number of National Merit Scholars enrolled. Your journey continues here at the University of Oklahoma. It's got to be real barbecue, right? Not some frozen meat cooked who knows where, who knows when, and then trucked in. No, it's got to be the finest cuts. It's got to be a lot of choices, like nine different meats. It's got to be fast for dine-in, carry-out, or catering. It's got to be smoked fresh right there that day over aged pecan wood. It's got to be the place where all the barbecue wannabes take a back seat, because they can't compete. It's got to be real barbecue, right? It's got to be Billy Sims. Billy Sims Barbecue. Eat like a champion today. Every minute, every day, and every night, there's someone who needs us. Every week and every year, we bring something new to the way we care for individuals and our communities. Every thought and every action is spent improving the way we imagine health and wellness. Because every child, every woman, and every man deserves the best possible life. St. Francis Health System. Healthcare for life. Welcome back to Oklahoma Sports Scene, and we're extremely pleased to have the former chief of the Muscogee Creek Nation, George Tiger. George, welcome to Sports Scene. Gentlemen, good to be with you. We are so, a... We're so glad you're here, and because we know that you're an expert in what I we're going know. to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that, but I sound like you guys are ready to place your bets. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, when the... Let's wrap this up and get out there, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. When the Supreme Court ruled 7-2 to two, that uh -huh. states had the right to make a decision on what type of, of uh, sports gaming they could uh, would allow... Uh, it opened the door for everyone, mm -hmm. and right. uh, it is one of those things I noticed in reading uh, uh, one of my research items, Sports Illustrated, <laughs> that uh, there are three states that have already passed mm -hmm. legislation to, to go uh, immediately when, when this happened. Uh, George, what do you think uh, Oklahoma is going to do? Uh, first of all, Coach, I think everybody already knows that it's still illegal here in Oklahoma. Yeah. Uh, I think there's been some prelude, uh, if you will, uh, leading up to uh, at some point in time when uh, the state decides to make it legal uh, in the last session by passing the ball and dice games. Uh, 
uh, I think that kind of helped uh, set the stage uh, to some degree uh, in the future to be able to do that. Um, of course, uh, in some of the gaming compacts uh, the, the tribes have here in Oklahoma, uh, that was was some tribes a part of the thing that was already in their gaming compact. Uh, that at some point in time, if there is a sports betting that is allowed in the state of Oklahoma, that that, that they would have that opportunity. Uh, of course, there's always a, a, a room or options, if you will, uh, for negotiations on such things as split between the tribes and, and, and the state. Uh, it is my understanding that uh, what the tribes, uh, to some degree, have offered to put on the table uh, is much higher than any other uh, state and tribes that are, are uh, currently involved uh, in negotiations right now. Uh, I don't think that there's going to be anything coming up real quick. Uh, I know that there's talk about special session, but the only agenda item from what I understand is going to be talking about the uh, cannabis uh, issue. Uh, and of course, um, uh, just like with anybody else, uh, when it's election year, everybody's waiting to see who's going to get elected. Um, one thing about things with the Indian tribes and, and the state here in Oklahoma, and, and probably with the most uh, states in the country that have uh, tribes, uh, tribal governments in their states, is that it's a continuous uh, educational process about tribal government, in particular with gaming, and especially with the sports betting uh, issues that, that uh, is going to be coming up. So uh, I know that uh, tribes here in Oklahoma certainly have started talking about uh, you know, possibilities. Uh, I am the chair for United uh, Indian Nations of Oklahoma, Kansas, and Texas. We met uh, on our quarterly meeting last week, and this was a heavy topic of discussion. Uh, the closest uh, facility, I guess, within our area would be in Mississippi. Uh, I know some tribes have already started uh, going down there to kind of get some ideas and what have you at some point in time when it, it is legal here in, uh, here in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. Well, what's the, what's the legislature... I assume it's going to pass, but then maybe not. But I assume it's going to pass. Once it passes, how long does it take to get up and running? You think? I mean, once the governor signs off and all that's done, you've you know negotiated the compact. I mean, we are we talking a couple of years away still, probably at the earliest. You know, when you talk about governments, uh, <laughs> <laughs> time frames don't mean anything. Right, right. You know, it's, a, it's usually a very slow. Uh, uh, if you will, uh, turtle type of, uh, of uh, time frames, you know, uh, when it comes to that. Uh, when it comes to negotiations, of course, there's two or three tiers that, uh, especially with uh, Indian gaming, uh, that have to be included or be, have to be in the loop. Of course, State of Oklahoma tribes and then the Office of uh, Indian Gaming with the Bureau of Indian Affairs, they all have to be involved in to some degree in, in this. Uh, the one thing I think that is really unique here in Oklahoma is that even though the states uh, do get uh, uh, splits, if you will, with Class 3 gaming, what we know as Class 3 gaming here in Oklahoma. Uh, uh, it, it's it's something that's unique in terms of um, it doesn't make any difference as to how the states uh, and the tribes are able to negotiate. There's always somebody higher above on the federal side that uh, both have to be able to satisfy in terms of, of uh, Indian gaming. I will say this. I think Indian gaming across the country is the most regulated, even more regulated than New Jersey, and even more regulated out in Nevada uh, than any other gaming that we see uh, in, in the country. And we do a great job, and I say we, we as tribes here in Oklahoma, we do a great job of regulating ourselves. Uh, we issue our own license on our venues uh, as it stands now. Uh, and of course, uh, the, the state gets a benefit uh, because of gaming. Uh, the states uh, and, and tribes, uh, the state recognizes the, the important impact that the tribes have on, on, on the state of Oklahoma, economically, uh, in particular with uh, contributing to the coffers of the state. Uh, those are things that's very important to all Oklahomans. You know, people forget we're the original Oklahomans, you know, as Indian people. Uh, what we do as tribal governments, so I've always said, what is good for tribal governments is good for the state of Oklahoma. And I think in particular uh, with what's happened with the decision of the Supreme Court, uh, it's just opened up a whole new avenue in gaming. And it's wonderful for everybody involved. Uh, you know, it allows for, for tribes to uh, expand their resources in terms of providing more services. 
uh, it's providing the state of Oklahoma more uh, funding for whatever program they want to fund as well. George, we'll need to have you back sometime when this gets down the road because that seven minutes went awful fast. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we certainly are proud that you're here with us today, and we want you to enjoy yourself and your bride oh. at the uh, Bricktown Brewery. Well, thank you very much, guys. Appreciate sure. it. Yeah. Presenting sponsor. Okay, thank and, you. And uh, we're excited. Uh, we'll have you back. All right. You, you'll be back. I'll look forward to it. Always, Always a pleasure, you. George. And, and you probably won't see me or JV out there anytime in the next <laughs> 10 minutes. 10 minutes, that's exactly right. Uh, well, you know, Bricktown is a great place to go eat. Right. And uh, one of the things that we have at Bricktown uh, is the crispy pepperoni pizza. Oh. And I mean, it's not the little circle pepper. It's the strips of pepperoni they put on the JV. Oh. And I guarantee you, John, you would love the chopped salad. Oh yeah, there's there's no no question. You can about tell that. I'm kind of a chop salad guy. <laughs> you, you, you've had a lot of chop salad during your career. And the other thing they have is the apple bacon grilled cheese with tomato soup. It's unbelievable. Go to Bricktown. Celebrate your home today at Bowen's Discount Carpet for our shop and compare sale. Take advantage of our guaranteed lowest prices you can find. Great deals on new Shaw floors and a huge variety of brands and colors that you will have to see to believe. Let Shaw Floors spice up your space along with 36 years of experience and the beauty of your floors will shine. Come out to Bowens where we refuse to be undersold. At Roger State University, we keep things personal. It all starts here. We make sure our graduates get the most out of their education. RSU has campuses in Claremore, Bartlesville, and Pryor, with on-campus housing and a wide variety of programs to suit your needs. It all starts here. Roger State University. Welcome back to Oklahoma Sports Scene, and now we get to grill John Klein. Anybody that's been somewhere for five decades needs to be grilled. 1978, you started with Thanksgiving the Day. I can remember the exact day really? because I was at the Oklahoma Nebraska football game. Billy Sims fumbled on his own three yard line with about a minute to go. Nebraska cashed in, beat number one Oklahoma. They were number two. Next week, Nebraska. Was, but that was my last day at the Ardmorite, Ardmore, Oklahoma, my first day at the Tulsa World. And uh, it's been all downhill since, but uh, no. <laughs> it was, I tell you this, it, I remember because it was an important game, my first day, and, and it was so darn cold. I was got, that may still be the coldest I've ever been anywhere for anything. Although I did cover some basketball games and wrestling matches in Iowa State in March that were rather chilly too, which I'm sure your days oh, in Iowa man, you remember. You so, you know, yeah, but... Well, so, yeah, it's a lot of years of, um, I, people ask me all the time, they go, do you miss sports? Uh, I've been out now almost two years. Uh, yes, I, I absolutely miss going to stuff like the Rose Bowl and, and uh, the really fun stuff, the big wrestling tournaments, the great basketball, the Final Fours. I've been to, you know, a handful of Super Bowls. Yeah, I, I miss that stuff. I, and I miss just the camaraderie with the coaches. I don't see you guys like I used to see all the time. Well, I see JV all the time. Right. And we're not going to talk about that. But no, I, we're I, not. I, I, do, I do miss it. And, uh, you know, what I don't miss is getting in my car and driving to Ames, Iowa, or getting in my, our car in Lubbock, Texas at uh, 8 o'clock at night and getting home at 4 in the morning. I, I don't miss that stuff. But... Uh, Sure, I miss sports. Sports is fun. I mean, that's when people pay to go watch this stuff that we get sent to for free. So, yeah, I, of course I miss some of it. But, of course, you know what he's doing now. He does have some great stories that you would never think about. But John Klein will go dig them out. And suddenly, <laughs> when you start reading it, like uh, I'll have to go back sometimes and read it twice in order to really get what I wanted out of it. And uh, John, you do a great well, job. Well, you know, it, it is interesting because the people I deal with are so different. I mean, look, I, I dealt with you and Gil for many, many years, and, and I love the coaches, and I love a lot of the athletes. 
But I also spend a lot of time talking to 17 year old kids trying to figure out something interesting to write about them about. And, and it, you know, it was tough. Most of the people I talk to now are older and there's a reason I'm talking to them. And there's, it's usually because there's something really unusual or really interesting about them. So, I mean, nowadays, it's almost like most of the time I go out, it's almost like a home run. I mean, I go out there and I go, wow, that person was really interesting. And it is different. It's completely different. But I've always believed this. And you can look on the Tulsa World staff. You know, Randy Crable, former sports writer who's an absolutely fabulous political writer. I mean, Republicans hate him and the Democrats hate him. So you know he's, he's doing, doing a good job. job. <laughs> Rhett Morgan, who's a fabulous business writer, was with the Tribune and in the world and, and was a great sports writer. And now he's an absolutely fabulous business writer. Jimmy Trammell, who is an absolutely fabulous sports writer, who's now our scene writer and does everything from concerts to festivals and everything in between. I think if you're a sports writer, you have operated under an incredible deadline pressure. I mean, all the time people are like, John, can you go out and get that on Thursday? Any chance you could have that ready for Friday? I go, I can have it ready for you by noon on Thursday. How's that? Because I spent most of my life going to a game, <laughs> let's say in Norman, that starts at 8 o'clock at night. And they need a, a, a column from me about the OU Iowa State football game that's going to get over at 1130. They need 1135 or 1125 if I can get it. So, I mean, you <laughs> it's a different thing. But for me, I, was, I had done sports so many years that I haven't changed. I still come in and they go, can you uh, get us something for Tuesday? Yeah, I can have it here in about an hour. How's that? I mean, I, I, I'm not going to mess around, but yeah, I, I do miss the, the hanging out with guys like y'all. So what's, uh, what's the biggest change? The, the newspaper business is really going oh, through my transition. Goodness. What's the biggest change you see? Well, for starters, it, it is, it's contracting because young people don't read. Uh, they may read, but it's on the phone. Right. You know what I'm saying? And Trying to monetize that is the greatest challenge facing not just us in newspaper business, all media. Because kids are like, I don't need to watch TV or read the paper. I just look here. Oh, there it is on Twitter. I got it. I need now. I know everything I need to know. Uh, I hear a lot of people talking about, well, you know, it's the fake news. I said, I don't think that has anything to do with it. I think it's the habits of young people people anymore is that they're getting everything off the phone, which is fine. I mean, we've got it on phones, our news feeds out there on that, but it is completely different now. It is, it is a completely different, how we deliver the news, how we write it, same thing, but how it's delivered to you guys is completely different. Like, you know, Jamie and I were talking about schedules in the newspaper the other day. And I was like, you know, I'm sure they get on Gil's website and go, okay, I need to know where are all the Tulsa public schools uh, playing tonight and are the games canceled? Because in the olden days, you know, you'd have a hard time getting that news out. Now you can stick it out there on the internet and hey, we got some games canceled because of snow tonight. John, what I've, what I've said you know, when we were in the college business, your website's everything. Oh, that's the front porch of your university. And uh, within, within uh, 15 seconds, you either got them or they're gone. Right. You know, you, you can, you've got that because they operate that way. The younger people operate that way. And, and when you're recruiting and doing all those things, well, when you're selling a newspaper, if you're selling information, you know, the, the worst thing I think that's happened about the newspaper is that now you're reporting history because right. it's already out there. Yeah, you know, it, it, how you write there. a game story now, completely different than what, exactly. than when it was when I showed up and Mr. Connor said, okay, you're going to go to that game and write us a game story. Completely different deal these days. We need to have you back. We it was great fun. Fast. Every two years, I'll come over here. How's and, that? Well, let's go to Bricktown tonight. We're on the way. Ooh. There we go. Okay. <laughs> you guys, thank you. I had a great time, and it's always great to see you guys. And uh, sorry Chris wasn't here. I'd make fun of him, too. So <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be back with the clothes on Bricktown sports scene in just a minute. At Bricktown Brewery, we're known for our famous original craft beers like Single String Stout and Bluesberry Ale. 
Did you know we also brew our own root beer at our Oklahoma City brew house? It's called Attaboy Root Beer, and you'll love it no matter what your age. Just ask for a Bricktown Kids menu with all the favorites for our guests 12 and under. Bricktown Brewery opens every day at 11 a.m. Already. Are you ready? No! Your room is going to be so cute. OU is a pay setter in higher education and leads the nation in the number of National Merit Scholars enrolled. Your journey continues here at the University of Oklahoma. Welcome back to Oklahoma Sports Scene, brought to you by Bricktown Brewery. And now it's time for that fun part of the show, parting shots. JB? All right. My parting shot has to do with professional baseball. When you start looking at both the American League and the National League, I can't remember in past years when there were so many in each division so close. And uh, if you take a look at the American League East and look at the Yankees and look at the Red Sox, they're tied. Here, we're getting close to the 1st of June, and they're tied, and you go down to each of the others, and the top two teams are very close. So continue to watch good baseball coming up. John. Well, I don't pay a whole lot of attention to sports anymore, but I really wanted to discuss with you guys where you think Baker Mayfield might get drafted, and do you think the Thunder will go very far in the playoffs this year? Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> The, the Thunder is an interesting thing to me because that was kind of at the end of my career. And it's been interesting to watch their development and, and how, you know, the ebb and flow of things. I, I think people have a tendency. I, I felt like that it was going to be Oklahoma's team. And I really felt like that that had been kind of offered to Tulsa. Hey, we're going to be Oklahoma Thunder. Wasn't that way. And there's been, you know, it's a good thing to have an NBA team right down the turnpike. But I think it would be better if the Thunder would involve Tulsa a little more. You know, it's almost like I hear people do, well, you know, Kevin Durant did this, Russell Westbrook did this, this guy's done this. Come to Tulsa and do it once in a while. Come to Booker T and, and do, a, do a, 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 you know, a basketball thing with Tulsa Public Schools. Or I, I wish the Thunder would be a little more involved. And, you know, if they get to a point where they're not as good, you know, they've been lucky. They've been great. And if they're not as good, they're going to need more people from up here. So I hope the Thunder will come visit us more because I think they're very entertaining. Now, JB uh, has uh, taken all the time and John took what was left. <laughs> all I'm going to say is question 799. Make sure you have an opinion about 799. Be with us next time when we will have the voice of the Cowboys, Dave Huntsinger, and his color man, John Holcomb. KOTV. It's going to be a great show, and we certainly look forward to having you with us next time. So remember, it's Sports Scene. Let's have a great time, and we'll see you next week.